Chapter 1.3.6 Soft War would have strategic benefits for rebalancing power structures. What exactly would be the benefit of creating a soft form of war fighting? To answer this, let's consider the previously mentioned benefits of war fighting and then reflect upon what would happen if it became more massless, disembodied, or immaterial. A soft form of of war fighting would give people access to the supreme court of physical power. And that court would likely be just as indiscriminate and impartial in electronic form as it already is in kinetic form. For this reason, soft war fighting protocols could be ideal for small countries wielding small amounts of kinetic power, i.e. small militaries, seeking to settle policy disputes with larger countries wield in larger, large amounts of kinetic power, i.e. big militaries. Soft war fighting could also clearly have utility for nuclear superpowers seeking to settle major policy disputes with other nuclear superpowers because it would enable them to battle each other without the threat of mutually assured destruction. Is he about to drop his term? Mutually assured preservation. Okay, back to reading. An international monetary policy dispute, for example, represents the type of strategic level international policy dispute that could be settled using a soft form of war fighting. This kind of dispute would be prime candidate for nuclear peers seeking to settle a major political conflict in an energy efficient way that is far less likely to escalate than traditional warfare would. Of course, an international monetary policy dispute wouldn't be the only type of policy dispute that could be resolved using a soft form of war fighting, but it does seem to be an obvious first use case, especially considering how the U.S. is openly denying other nuclear powers access to a financial computer network, such as the U.S. is currently doing to Russia via sanctions. This is super important, people. If societies were to invent a soft form of international war fight, and the trade-off between law and war would likely remain the same. War would still represent a more energy-intensive way to settle disputes and establish a dominance hierarchy over limited resources than law would be. But a soft form of warfare would only burn watts electronically, not kinetically. It would therefore have profound, different emergent behavior, a major one being its non-destructive side effects. By definition, there would be no kinetic forces or masses involved in a disembodied or immaterial form of soft war fighting. So there would be, so there would likely be no practical threat of physical injury. Thus, a soft form of war fighting would represent a non-lethal form of war fighting, making it a potentially game-changing and revolutionary way for nations to establish, enforce, and secure international policy. Of course, soft war fighting machines would not completely replace the need for hard war fighting machinery. This makes sense considering how we already know that software doesn't completely replace the need for hardware. We should expect soft war fighting machinery to continue to rely on hard war fighting machinery just like software continues to rely on hardware. As long as people continue to value material things with mass, they will need a mass-based method of kinetic warfare to keep that mass secure. But it just so happens to be the case that much of what people value is as disembodied, immaterial, and massless as the soft war machines which could one day be used to physically secure them. For example, money doesn't require mass. Money's predominant form is already the disembodied, immaterial, massless form of software. As another example, common belief systems like social contracts or international policies never had mass in the first place. Things like constitutions and rules of law have always been disembodied and immaterial. So who says they can't be physically secured against systematic exploitation and abuse in a disembodied and immaterial way? 
Just as software dramatically changed society's understanding of how to build and operate machines, software could dramatically change society's understanding of how to build and operate social systems, particularly with respect to the way societies agree on policies, physically enforce them, and physically secure them against systematic, against systemic exploitation and abuse. Similar to how the amount of hardware needed to compute things substantially decreased following the invention of software, the amount of hard warfighting machinery needed to secure our policies and our belief system using physical power could decrease following the invention of soft warfighting machinery. Considering how software made it feasible to build what were previously considered to be impossible or impractical, impractical computing systems, soft warfighting could make it feasible to build what were previously considered to be impossible or impractical defense systems. Bizarre and counterintuitive solutions for national security, solutions like non-lethal and non-destructive world warfare, would theoretically be feasible if a soft form of warfare were discovered and utilized by nation states, and it could dramatically transform society's ethical calculus in the process.